Okay, polynomial inequalities. We are going to solve these by factoring. First step is to get it equal to zero. Factor. Set each one equal to zero. These two are critical points. We want to put those on the number line. The critical points, because it's greater than or equal to, are included. Now it's a matter if region 1 is included. Region 2, is that included? And region 3, is that included? What we need to do is test those regions with some number left of negative 2, so that would be like negative 5. I'm going to test it into this right here. If I plug in negative 5 for x, I would get negative 10 in the first parenthesis. I would get negative number in the second parenthesis, and I know a negative times a negative is a positive number, which would be greater than zero, so that would give me a true statement. So I'm going to put yes in this region. Again, chose a negative 10, for example. I get a negative in the per first parenthesis, a negative in the second parenthesis. Negative times a negative is a positive. I don't really care about the number. I just know it will be greater than zero. I can choose 0 for an x for, to test the second region. That would leave me a negative in the first parenthesis, a positive in the second parenthesis. When I multiply those together, I get a negative number, which is going to be less than 0, which means it is not part of the region. Region 3 would be picking some number larger than 5, like 10. That would give me a positive number here, a positive number in the second parenthesis, Positive times a positive is a greater than zero number, so this is a yes. So this is my solution set, which would be all x's less than or equal to negative 2, and all x's greater than or equal to 5. And looking at our choices, doesn't look like none of these work. So none of these would be the correct solution. Okay, the next one um, is a little more complicated. The factoring is a lot more difficult. So we're going to have to factor in groups. And again, these are better with experience. But it turns out that we're going to want x cubed minus 25x in one group and x squared minus 25 in another group. So I'm going to write them in a different order. I'm going to factor out an x in the first two terms. And now you can probably see that we have x squared minus 25 twice. I'm now going to factor that out. and I have x left from the first term, and I have just a 1 left in this part over here. And now, for this to be true, I can say either the first parenthesis is 0, or the second parenthesis is equal to 0. I have three critical points. Negative 5, negative 1. I like to put 0 in here. Not a critical point. And 5. 
So I got to test a region here. So I have one, two, three, four regions to test. So I'm going to test it again in this to see if we get something that's less than zero, which would be negative. So in the first region, I'm going to test negative 10. Negative 10 squared is a positive 100. That makes this a positive value. Negative 10 makes this a negative value. Positive times a negative is negative, so this is true. I'm going to choose negative 3. Negative 3 squared minus 25 is going to be a negative number. Negative 3 is going to be negative. Negative times a negative is positive not less than zero. You can choose zero, which would mean negative in the first parenthesis, positive. Negative times a positive is negative. That is true. And above five, like seven, 49 minus 25 will be positive. This will also be positive, not greater than zero. So my solutions are x is less than negative 5 and x is that are between negative 1 and 5. So it's going to look like that. Now using set notation that would be negative infinity whoops Starting on the left, negative infinity until we get to negative 5, unioned with start at negative 1, end at 5. Um, looks like C. So that is polynomials and inequality.